Good evening, and thank you, Lauren. So, sitting up before this event, you know, the hours running up to tonight, I was quite fascinated by something. Here we are coming together to discuss this concept, why we work, on the very same night that our president gets up and addresses the nation about unemployment. Currently, about 9% of America is unemployed. If we look at a room about this size, that's about the first row and a half. It's crazy to think about. That number goes up as you get younger. Now, on the other hand, let's look at the concept of being satisfied with your work. Out of all Americans, only approximately 60%, depending on who you ask, will report that they actually enjoy their jobs. So this question, why we work, is not only timely, but also relevant. Throughout most of human history, you would have been crazy to ask yourself this question. The answer was obvious. You work to make ends meet. You work to survive. It's only more recently that we can ask ourselves this question seriously. Why do we work? Well, I'd love to share a little bit with you about why I work. I work not only to make ends meet, but also to achieve immortality. Immediately, you might wonder, what did I sign up for? Well, I can assure you, I'm not a snake oil salesman. I'm not going to be talking to you this evening about Judgment Day, nor will I be serving, serving Kool-Aid at the end of the evening. <laughs> Rather, what I would like to talk with you about is a very, very simple idea, a credo, if you will, something you can live your life by. About a year ago, I was sitting in Chicago, getting ready to address and speak to a group of America's best and brightest, future managers. The concept was making an impact. Immediately, I thought to my father. In his professional life, my father was a doctor. He saved lives. Talk about making an impact. In his home life, my father was a video game instructor, a coach. He did a little bit of everything. But more importantly than anything else, there was a theme in what he did. The theme was that he was a teacher. He may never have thought about it. He may never have considered himself a teacher. But what he taught to me, I will carry forward. So I'd love for you to take a moment and reflect. Maybe you've lost someone close to you. Maybe it was a parent. Maybe it was a relative. It could have been even a close friend. I don't want you to think, though, about the fact that they left you. I want you to think about what they left with you. Think about those people who taught you how to swim, how to ride a bike, how to do amazing things and be the person you are today. To some extent, they're still here with you. They really never left. So, the reason I say was, is my father passed away back in 1994 when I was seven years old. You must ask, what got him? Well, what got him was his work. He contracted hepatitis from one of his patients and shortly passed away later. This was the same man who, even while he was undergoing chemotherapy, was able to take a busted chin, his own busted chin, mind you, and stitch it up with fishing line and a fishing hook. Crazy, right? So, back to this question of achieving immortality. We don't achieve immortality through science, at least not yet. Maybe not through religion, maybe not through any one of those ways you might currently know. But rather, we achieve immortality through the impact we leave on others. So take a second and reflect on those things that were taught to you and those things that you will teach others. Because those others will carry, those knowledge, or carry that knowledge forward. They'll teach others. And hopefully, throughout the future, you'll essentially become immortal. So I encourage you, go out. Make every moment a teaching moment. Take your knowledge, your skills, your unique and amazing talents, and pass those forward. Become immortal through your work. Thank you.